We believe that abortion is health care and that everyone deserves access to the care that they need when and where they need it. And so our team is proud to take this one small step. New Brunswick is moving forward in making abortion services more accessible across the province. The newly elected Liberal government has repealed a decades-long ban on funding abortion clinics. A single line has been removed from the province's Medical Services Payment Act that will now allow Medicare to cover the cost of a surgical abortion performed outside of a hospital. Susan Holt was sworn in as Premier just six days ago, making this one of her first orders of business. Susan Holt is the Premier of New Brunswick, and she joins me now. Premier, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you too, David. Th this move on abortion, this is one of your first actions in government. Why is it so important for you to get this done so early in your mandate? Well, in part because it really was the, the quickest thing to do. It took a simple uh, decision of Cabinet and a directive to the Lieutenant Governor uh, that was then ratified so that we could remove the barrier to equitable access to abortion for uh, for New Brunswickers. So it's one of the ones that we could do without going to the legislature, mm. without having to pass a bill or, or new legislation. And so uh, uh, we could do it quickly, and we did. You, you, you say it's a simple thing to do, but it's a significant thing to do because these restrictions go back in some form to the, what the 1993, 1994, when Frank McKenna was was feuding with Henry Morgenthaler about setting up a clinic in Fredericton. So it is a significant move on, on what has been a long battle um, in, in your province. That's right. There have been people who have been fighting for this for more than 36 years, um, and. And it's thanks to them, really, that they never gave up, that the pressure was always on to make sure that we had equitable access to health care for New Brunswickers and that people could get safe abortions covered by Medicare in this province. And so uh, I was really thrilled that many of those people were there yesterday for our announcement, people who have fought for this, uh, what should be an equal right they have fought hard for it, um, and I'm the one who's in the fortunate position of getting to make it happen. This, uh, um, this lifts the restriction on, on public money being used to pay for abortions in clinics outside of a hospital setting. And, and one of the challenges has been for, for uh, uh, advocates for reproductive rights is that this limited it to a couple of hospitals in, in two cities, and, and this became a barrier. So the restriction is limited, but access isn't automatically increased there. So how do you as a government take steps to improve access to the service that you've now made more widely available? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm glad you pointed this out because this step does not change access to abortion in New Brunswick tomorrow, right? What we actually need is the people and the places where it can be done in community so that someone doesn't have to contemplate driving hundreds and hundreds of kilometers to try and get access to an abortion. So we're going to work with the medical society and the health authorities to make sure that we have the, the billing rates, right? There needs to be a code that you can bill for in order to get paid to deliver that service. And then we need to make sure that we have the primary primary care practitioners who are going to deliver those services in community. And it connects really nicely to our um, transformation of primary care with these collaborative healthcare teams um, that we're going to be putting in place all over the province because New Brunswick has a huge issue of people who don't have a family doctor, who don't have access to health care. And so we're going to be building out these collaborative clinics uh, and abortion services are going to be available in some of them. What does this mean for Clinic 554? This is something that has come, been in the news during federal elections and provincial elections as a clinic that was offering the services but was forced to close its doors, I believe, because of the lack of, of, of access to public funding. Do you know if, if this clinic would come back in some form or is, is it more likely it ends up in these collaborative cares uh, to make it more widely available? Well, interestingly, the, the former doctor, Dr. Adrian Edgar of Clinic 554, was at our announcement yesterday mm -hmm. as well and said that he, he may look now at reinstating these services because they will be funded and covered. Uh, the physical clinic itself is in question because I think there's um, different owners of the building. The building's in a bit of a different state. Um, but uh, I think that it's it's quite possible that Dr. Edgar will reoffer those services now. And uh, he has the expertise to do it and um, has even relationships with 
uh, with the community to support the work. So right. Okay. Well, look. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you watched the U.S. election uh, like everybody else did, even though you were busy with your own in that same time frame. Um, but you know what an issue this has been in the United States, and you're making this move at a time when a lot of people south of the border are very worried about what this means for women there with the new Trump administration and, and the end of Roe versus Wade. Uh, how, how do you view that situation? Did that factor into your thinking here, or was this something that you were clearly intent on doing regardless of, of where things went in, in the United States? Well, it was something we were intent on doing regardless. It was a commitment we made in our platform. It was something that we knew was straightforward to do technically. Um, we had hoped that it would be maybe more celebratory, um, but instead it turned out to be a bit more cathartic uh, mm. for New Brunswickers who watched the news in uh, from the U.S. on Tuesday and who woke up Wednesday feeling concerned about uh, a possible slide back um, and rights and women's rights to to choose and get access to care. And so a lot of people commented to us on Thursday that we gave them a bit of hope and a bit of light in what has been a pretty dark week. There are a lot of other challenges potentially coming from this change in direction for the United States, certainly on the trade front. We know the federal government ha has rebuilt its Canada-U.S. Cabinet Committee, and they say they're reaching out to premiers to talk to them about, you know, w reaching across the border to different uh, trading partners and political allies to make sure they preserve the relationship. Uh, have you had any conversations with the federal government on this yet? What, what, how do you think Canada should approach uh, a return to Donald Trump in the White House? Oh, I think Canada should approach a return to Donald Trump with uh, a lot of care and um, a lot of attention because certainly the president's rhetoric in terms of tariffs and their kind of restrictions on trade that he's talked about could be really damaging to the Canadian economy and certainly here in New Brunswick where 92% of our exports are going to the United States. It matters to us um, that we have a strong, stable, fair trading partner and the kind of tariffs that uh, Trump has talked about are deeply concerning. So uh, I think Canada needs to come at this uh, in a way that really safeguards our exports and our economy. I know there's going to be a lot of pressure on the federal government and the federal cabinet to take the lead on this, but you know, the first ministers at the provincial level uh, sometimes have better relationships with governors and, and, and boards of trade and, and professional associations across their borders. What do you think you and, and your fellow premiers should be doing on this? Well, I think we all need to work together, right? There's there's a lot of these relationships that are national uh, and they're built off of, you know, our history with NAFTA and um, with the, the new agreement that I can never get that acronym <laughs> right or the expression. Um, but we also have really close ties to our, our close neighbors. So with mm -hmm. Maine and with the eastern states, and we have a, a group that meets as uh, eastern governors and Atlantic provinces. And so uh, we'll be doing some things with our, our direct neighbors and the people with whom we share, literally share a border and, um, and, and share a number of things, connected economies for sure. Okay, so you, you've made uh, a significant move on, on abortion as, as part of your platform. When we last spoke, you were still trying to figure out how you can deliver on things of removing the HST, for example, from home heating, you know, with the winter months coming and, and getting rent controls and things like that in place. Where are you on those? How, have you figured out yet? I know you've only been, what, sworn in five, six days now. Uh, how quickly you're going to be able to move on, on those core campaign provinces, promises for New Brunswickers? We're going to move really quickly on those core campaign promises. So as soon as the day after the election, the transition team started working on those commitments. And we had a cabinet meeting yesterday where we tackled um, those things that you just talked about. And so you can expect to hear from us on uh, on rent caps and on taking 10% off of people's electricity uh, in the, the, the days and weeks ahead. Uh, because our commitment to New Brunswickers was mm -hmm. we would get stuff done before Christmas, uh, and we're going to do that on some of these files. Do you think you can do that on the HST? Because I, I know there is a notification period because it's a blended tax, and, and there is just a, a red tape process that, that could push this into the new year. Do you think you can get ahead of that, or are you, you kind of stuck? Yeah, we actually did learn quite a bit about that red tape mm -hmm. process and some of the limitations on um, on that partnership with the Canada Revenue Agency. And so uh, we found an alternate solution that'll let us do it quicker for New Brunswickers. And that's what we'll be describing to people in the weeks ahead. Okay, so you're not going to tell me what that alternate solution is today. You're going to save that for New Brunswick first. Is that the plan? <laughs> that's exactly right. Okay, all right. All right. Well, Premier Susan Holt, uh, it's good to speak with you. Thanks for coming back on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks, David.